welcome to learning monkey i am vikram in this class we'll try to understand pure aloha so the concept so the theoretical concept of random axis has already been discussed there we have discussed that there are different random axis protocols available in that one of the protocol is aloha which is divided into two different protocols one is pure aloha and the other one is slotted hello aloha these concepts we have already discussed in our previous videos if you haven't watched those videos please watch those videos and come back here and every video in our uh, uh, in, in our channel is going to be a part of entire course or a playlist our suggestion is to follow the entire course so that you can have better understanding of the concepts the link for the playlist is provided in the description below now pure aloha is also uh, the original uh, version of the aloha so what this it is one of the technique which is used in the earlier 1970s 1970s so uh, how this uh, pure aloha works is before that we will try to understand random axis uh, random axis what is meant by random axis we will try to have a recap of that concept again so here we are having a shared medium and this shared medium is sh shared by these computers so so whenever the data whenever a computer wants to transmit the data uh, transmit the data what it will do what that random access means is uh, what it will do is it will directly send the data uh, on to this shared medium so what happens is if this this computer wants to send the data and this computer also wants to send the data so what happens is both of these computers will send the data as and when it is ready to transmit so at the same point of time or uh, uh, at any point of time if if a system decides to sense the uh, send the data it will transmit it so what is the problem we have with that kind of transmission is whenever whenever if 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 some data is being transmitted in the shared medium and during the transmission whenever another another <coughs> another system wants to send the data there will be a collision there will be a collision so the data will be discarded the data will be destroyed or the data will uh, the data will be uh, discarded so this is what this is the problem that we have with this kind of uh, systems with this kind of shared medium so whenever the systems want to randomly send the data onto the shared medium there will be a collision so this collision problem has to be addressed so let's try to understand it how the pure aloha is going to address the collision problem that we will try to understand so what happens is so these two uh, uh, these two systems has transmitted the data this is sender so for example assume that this is the sender it has transmitted the data and at that point of time during the transmission or at the transmission time some other system also transmitted the data so what happens both will get collided and the things will get destroyed so what what the sender will do is the sender will wait for the acknowledgement from the receiver so from the receiver the sender will wait for the acknowledgement as the as the as the transmission has been destroyed due to collision so the sender will wait for the timeout period so this is this we have discussed already so the sender will wait for the timeout period and after the timeout period it will transmit the uh, it will transmit the uh, a frame again so what happens what happens with this kind of transmission is if both these transmit both these uh, systems are transmitted has transmitted and there is a collision what happens is both will wait for the same time out period after that both will again transmit the uh, data frame at the same point of time again there will be a collision so that is the problem so with that we will never be able to transmit the data so the retransmissions will continue again and again and again again so with that the efficiency of the network will get reduced so what how this collision can be uh, uh, can be addressed in the pure aloha is uh, so after the timeout time 
after the time of time both the systems will wait for a random period of time after the time of time both the systems will be will wait for a random amount of time how that happens is for example if this system has decided to wait for 4 nanoseconds and this system has decided to wait for 8 nanoseconds with that with that there will be a there will be a chance for both of them to transmit the packet successfully there will be a chance for the both the system to transmit the data frame successfully so how that happens how the protocol will work all those concepts we'll try to understand clearly with this diagram so before understanding this protocol we'll try to understand some basic terminology the terminology is k what does k means is it is number of attempts so the number of attempts made by the system is is represented by k and the other thing is tp tp stands for maximum propagation time so what is that maximum propagation time maximum propagation time is it is the amount of maximum amount of time taken by a data frame within the network to transmit from one system to another system so let's try to understand it very simply so these are the two farthest systems in the network so this is these two are very far away to each other so let's consider that this is what we call it as maximum propagation time in order to transmit the data from this system to this system what is the amount of time taken the maximum propagation time is represented by TP within the network within the two systems what is the maximum amount of time taken it is what we call it as a transmission maximum propagation time TFR is the average transmission time of the frame so what that average transmission of time is for example if the from here to here for example assume that the maximum propagation time is 2 nanoseconds assume it as 2 nanoseconds and will it take the same 2 nanoseconds for the transmission between these two systems no as this two as these two systems are very nearby so it is not required uh, for the data to take 2 nanoseconds for the transmission let's assume that it is taking 1 nanosecond and can you guess what is the amount of time taken between let's assume that it is 1.5 nanoseconds okay so so uh, the average transmission time the average transmission time is 1 plus 1.5 plus 1.25 uh, so that that makes that gives the average transmission time TB is the back of time so what this back of time is after after time out time the amount of time a system is waiting is what we call it as back of time so here 4 nanoseconds is the back of time and 8 nanoseconds is the back of time for this system so that is represented by TB so this is the basic terminology and so uh, what is the time out time time out time so how this time out time is decided is it is 2 into tp 2 into tp so what it means is for the it is also called as round trip time round trip time for the farthest systems to transmit the data for example if it is taking tp and for the same data packet to return back what is the amount of ta time taken so this is what we call it as round trip time round trip time means for the pa for the frame to go to the system and coming back to the system is what we call it as round trip time so which is decided by 2 into tp so the time out time is always going to be the time out time is always going to be 2 into tp so this is the amount of time here 2 nanoseconds is the propagation time the time out time is going to be 4 nanoseconds that is the amount of time for which a system will wait for retransmission so that is what we call it as time out time so now with this knowledge we'll try to understand how this protocol works here the start station has a frame to send whenever the station has to frame to send it will send so here it will take initially it will start from k is equal to zero so the k is the number of attempts the number of attempts done by the system is stored here and maximum number of attempts normally what the systems will do is for example if this is the system which is trying to access the medium it will take maximum number of attempts for the data frame to transmit is 15 after 15 attempts the system will abort the 
transmission it will it will just discontinue the transmission and it wait, it will wait for a uh, uh, wait for a particular period of time so it is it is not going to participate in the transmission it will just sit idle and after the, again that particular period of time again it will try for it will try for transmission so this is how the aloha works let's try to understand the algorithm clearly so initially the k atoms number of atoms k is equal to zero send the frame wait for time out time if it uh, wait for time out time if the acknowledgement has received so within after waiting that if the acknowledgement is received it is successful the transmission is successful so after the time of time if the if the packet if the acknowledgement was, is not received what happens is we are going to increment the value of k which means that incrementing this value of k means that the packet has not been successfully transmitted so the retransmission is done and that retransmission attempt is the first attempt so here the k value will get incremented it will become one now is the k greater than my uh, is craig k greater than k max k max is 15 now the k value is 1 1 greater than 15 is it true no so we are going to go here if it is greater than k max we are going to abort the we are going to abort the retransmission as 1 is not greater than 15 we are going to go and we are going to select the random number random number means here it is 4 nanoseconds or 8 nanoseconds that nan random number will be chosen so how that value will be chosen is it depends upon the attempts number so here the attempt number is 1 here the value of k is equal to 1 so within what range that number will be chosen so that is very important to understand as the value of k is 1 the range is always starts from 0 to 2 power k minus 1 2 power k is 2 power 1 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so as the attempt is the first attempt so think of it as the this point is very important to understand as the attempt is first attempt for the first attempt the random number that is chosen is the random number we have chosen we are not going to decide the back of time so we are going to choose the random number the back of time will be decided later so how it will be decided we'll try to understand as as uh, the k is not greater than k max we are going to choose a random number based upon that random number we are going to decide tb so how that random number is chosen is the choice will be taken from 0 to 2 power k minus 1 so it is 0 2 power k is 2 power 1 2 power 1 k is 1 2 power 1 is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so the choice will be taken between 0 to 0 to 1 it may take 0 or 1 as as we are having only two numbers for example let's assume that it has taken the value as uh, the value of r as 1 now we are going to calculate the back of time back of time means after time of time what is the amount of time that it has to wait back of time is represented by tb is equal to r into tp r means it is the random number tp is tp is here in our case it is 2 nanoseconds tp means maximum propagation time as we have taken this assumed that this is 2 nanoseconds let's see here as we have assumed it as 2 nanoseconds and the value random number we have taken it as r is equal to 1 so the tp so the tb tb is equal to 2 into 1 here 2 is tp 1 is r 2 into 1 is equal to 2 so it is going to wait for 2 nanoseconds for the first attempt as the random number is taken as 1 it has to wait for after the time of time it has to wait for 2 nanoseconds as let's assume that uh, uh, the uh, after waiting retransmission again it will start with the value of k is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 again send frame again it will wait for 2 into tp amount of time this tp amount of time this time of time and it will check for acknowledgement assume that it has not been transmitted it has been collided with another frame okay assume that it has happened now again the k value will get incremented what is the k value now k is equal to 2 now so the k value has been incremented to 2 k is equal to 2 now now is 2 greater than 15 no 
so we are going to uh, find the random number what is the range of that random number again it will change 2 power 2 minus 1 it is 0 to 2 power 2 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so it is going to choose the numbers between 0 1 2 3 so within these numbers it is going to choose so what is the possibilities for tb if the random number chosen is 0 tb is tb range is going to be so if the random number chosen is 0 tb is equal to r into tp 0 into 2 2 it starts from 2 1 into 2 4 1 into 2 sorry it is 0 into tb is 0 1 into 2 is 2 and again 2 into 2 r is equal to if, if the value of r is equal to 2 2 into 2 is 4 and 3 into 2 is 6 so the tb value will range from 0 4 0 to 4 or 6 so for example for example if the random value taken is 2 if the random value taken is 2 so the tb value is 2 into tp the tb value is 2 into tp tp value is 2 2 into 2 is 4 now the tb value is equal to 4 in the second retransmission in the second read in the first retransmission so now uh, it is going to wait for 4 nanoseconds it is 4 nanoseconds so after 4 nanoseconds again it is going to start its retransmission now the value of k is equal to 2 send the frame 2 into tp time this is the timeout time it is going to wait for after that it is going to check for the acknowledgement if the acknowledgement has received then successful if it has not been received the k value will get incremented now the k value will become 3 so now check is 3 greater than 15 no so what it is going to do it is going to it is it has to choose a random number between a certain range so what that range of numbers is 2 power 3 minus 1 2 power 3 is 8 8 minus 1 is 7 so the range is going to be between 0 to 7 if the random number range is 0 to 7 as the value of tp is 2 so the tb range is going to be so for example if between 0 to 7 it has chosen 4 so what is the value of tb it is 4 into 2 which is equal to 8 so it has to wait after this time of time for the second attempt it has to wait for 8 nanoseconds see how the how the waiting time is increasing and how it is going to how the uh, pure aloha system this is how the pure aloha system will work so how the pure aloha, aloha system is helping us to avoid the collision okay with random numbers choosing we can avoid the collision okay so this is how the pure aloha system will work hope you got the clarity on this concept if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates uh, if, you, if you feel that this video is helpful to you please give us a like symbol and please share this video with your friends so that they will also get benefited thanks for watching